Hey guys, welcome to a new Photoshop tutorial with PSD Box. I'm Andre, and today I'm going to show you how to create a lit print effect in Photoshop. It's a really simple effect, and it's uh, lit printing. It's a type of uh, photographic printing where you use a lithographic developer, and it uses black and white uh, to create the effect. I'm going to give you the link to Wikipedia if you want to learn more about uh, lit printing, and I'm going to use this image to uh, to create this. Uh, I'm gonna um, use this one as I said and when you start creating this the first thing you want to do is create a couple of copies so I'm gonna press ctrl J or command J on a Mac twice and I'm gonna nam name the first one mid tones and or and this one shadows or highlights and shadows if you want now on the mid tones uh, layer I'm gonna add a levels adjustment i'm going to clip it with alt and clicking between the two layers you can see this um, arrow appears you can um, create clipping masks like that and what we want to do here is limit the tones i'm going to use the output levels for this and i'm going to add i have my notes here 103 and for the highlights i have 176 these values might not work the same for um, for your image, uh, depending on how many highlights and shadows you have, but uh, try with these values. Try to get a neutral gray like this, a neutral image like that. Don't uh, darken it too much. Basically, what you want to do is lift the light on the shadows like that. Now, I'm going to activate the shadows layer, and I'm going to add another level adjustment on this. Again, clipped to it. And this time I'm going to use the, the values over here. I'm going to increase the shadows uh, for the, in, in order to see it better. And because the effect requires this, change the blend mode of this to soft light. And take a look um, at the effect. Just increase the shadows like that and with the highlights. And we can change this after uh, we add the rest of the, of the adjustment layers. But uh, uh, this is what we started with. Next, I'm going to add a neutral gray layer. I'm going to press and hold the Alt key and click the new layer icon. And the reason why I'm pressing, uh, pressing the Alt key is because when you do that and press this new layer icon, you will get this menu. And here we can change the blend mode. And it, uh, we also have this uh, setting that asks us if you want to fill this with a, a neutral 50% gray um, color. So I'm going to do that and click OK. Now, because this is on overlay and it's a neutral gray, nothing happens on the image. Uh, that's great because now I'm going to add some noise. I'm going to filter, noise, and choose uh, add noise. And 16%, I found this to be a good value. So uh, first I'm going to make the image slightly smaller before adding the noise because it's a bit too high resolution. 3000 pixel, uh, pixels, you can leave it um, to the original size if you want to. Now, again, I'm gonna go to filter, noise, and add noise. And as I said, 16% uh, I found to be a nice value. Uh, actually, I'm gonna turn this into a smart object before I do that. So I'm gonna go yet again to noise, add noise. And I'm gonna use uniform and monochromatic. Now, uh, after adding the noise, I'm going to filter again, and this time I'm going to blur this because I want this grain to be a bit uh, more visible. If you have Photoshop CC, you can use the camera raw filter and add grain from there. It's a bit more realistic, but with this one works just as well. So I'm going to Gaussian blur, and here I'm going to add just 0.5, and I hope you can see it on the video. It kind of uh, well, it softens the noise and it creates sort of a film looking grain. Now, uh, after we're done with that, uh, we need no color on this image. You can leave it color if you want, but I'm going to add a black and white adjustment. And the reason why I'm adding a black and white is because under this layer, we, ha we still have the color. And with the black and white, what you can do is change the brightness of this tone. So I can make some tones brighter. Um, this is good. Um, especially if you have, for example, a portrait and you have uh, too much uh, darkness on the skin or something like that and you want to bring uh, brightness uh, up, um, stuff like that. Uh, you, because we have the noise here, we, I can increase this. Uh, I have some more room to uh, increase the lightness here without getting too many uh, visible artifacts, but I'm going to leave it like that. If you want, 
to have some color you can simply drop the opacity of this and have some let some color pass through this i'm gonna leave it at 85 or 86 percent now after you're done with that let me check my notes here yeah we are gonna add a curves um yeah a curves layer and here um, this is good if you want to again if you want to add some lights on some part of your image um, what I did is I simply dragged this like that and here you can use this layer mask to remove uh, some of the of the effect on some areas of the image like for example right over here I'm going to use an opacity of 20 and flow as well and by the way you can change these values over here using the settings uh, on the settings bar using the keyboard uh, for example if you type 6 it will change the opacity if you want to change the flow you can press and hold the shift key and type 6 and that will change the flow so you can really um, easily change that so uh, with an opacity of 20 and flow 50 uh, with black i'm going to paint on this layer mask to remove the color from well this uh, actually here on the sky i'm going to leave it like that i just wanted to remove some of the effect here on the on this uh, houses there on these buildings now i'm gonna leave it like that and move on and the next thing i'm gonna do is i want to add some color to this um lit printing usually has this um, yellowish sepia tone to it so you have several options you can use um, a gradient map maybe that's the easiest option and just go here and choose photographic toning and i already have it here you can choose any of the of the presets here with the sepia on it but of course we are here in photoshop so you can give it your own look to it what i did is i used a color balance instead so i'm going to add a color balance and i'm going to give you the values the reason why i use a color balance is, a, is because i can fine tune uh, the tones here so uh, i'm going to give you the values first check preserve luminosity and then we're going to start with the shadows and the values that i have are seven um two and 15. Um, you can change the selected um, setting here with the tab key so here on the mid tones i have 22 0 and minus 24 and on highlights i have 5 minus 20 and 30 uh, sorry minus 30. Um, minus 30. Now let me explain a bit how this works in case there's somebody that doesn't know how this color balance works because it's a bit, uh, it can be a bit confusing especially for beginners. Now um, it helps a lot the fact that we have the colors over here so basically what you're, you're telling Photoshop, let's leave this to zero, is on highlights if you move this towards the right the highlights will get this bluish tone and if you move it, if you add positive um, negative values you will add yellow so that's the principle of photoshop colors here in photoshop and i think in pretty much any software so basically the opposite of blue is yellow the opposite of magenta is green and the opposite of cyan is red so that's basically how it works now that's the effect that i got using the color balance now if i want to have something more reddish i can just increase the red but maybe i will do it on the shadows and um, maybe a bit more magenta and probably drop the opacity slightly okay so here we have it this is our lit print effect in photoshop let me deactivate the curves so for a second yeah it's too dark i think it looks better this way let me show you the original image went from this to this so uh, that's all for today a uh, quick tutorial i hope you liked it and we'll see you on the next tutorial